Scene Script Ever wondered what the most notorious dictators were doing before they seized power? Let's delve into the unknown stories of these infamous figures. In the grand tapestry of history, the threads that weave together the lives of dictators are often shrouded in mystery and intrigue. We're accustomed to seeing them in their positions of power, commanding and imposing, but what about before they ascended the throne of tyranny? What were they like as ordinary citizens? Today, we're unraveling the early lives of some of the 20th century's most notorious dictators, Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, and Joseph Stalin. To understand the men behind the dictatorships, we must journey back to a time before their names were etched into the annals of history with infamy. It's fascinating, and at times chilling, to realize that these figures, who would go on to shape the world in drastic ways, once led lives as mundane as ours. It's a stark reminder that power and its potential for misuse can fall into any hands. Our first subject is Benito Mussolini, the man who would later become the infamous Il Duce, the leader of the National Fascist Party and Prime Minister of Italy. Before his rise to power, Mussolini was a world away from the dictator we remember today. Next, we'll explore the early life of Adolf Hitler, a name synonymous with tyranny and oppression. Long before his reign as the Führer of Nazi Germany, Hitler was a struggling artist with dreams far removed from the path he eventually chose. Finally, we'll delve into the youth of Joseph Stalin, who would later become the General Secretary of the Soviet Union. Stalin's journey to power was as tumultuous as his rule, marked by hardship, rebellion, and an unfaltering belief in his own destiny. The tales of these men before they became dictators offer a fascinating glimpse into the complexities of power, ambition, and the human condition. They serve as a stark reminder of the thin line between an ordinary life and one that can change the course of history. Now, let's start our journey with a look at the life of Benito Mussolini before he became Il Duce. Before his reign as the fascist dictator of Italy, Benito Mussolini was a journalist and a prominent figure in the Socialist Party. Born in Predapio, Italy in 1883, Mussolini spent his early life in a world far removed from the halls of power he would later inhabit. Fascinatingly, Prior to his infamous rule, Mussolini was deeply entrenched in the world of journalism. He worked as an editor for the socialist newspaper, Avanti, using his writing to advocate for workers' rights and to criticize the government. Yet, Mussolini's journalistic career was more than just a stepping stone to power. It was a platform that allowed him to shape and articulate his evolving ideology. Over time, his fervent belief in socialism began to waver, and a new ideology began to take root. This ideological shift was reflected in his writing, as he began to espouse nationalistic and militaristic views, marking his gradual transition towards fascism. His transformation from a socialist to a fascist was not an overnight change. It was a gradual process, influenced by the tumultuous political climate of early 20th century Italy. His ideological shift was significant, marking a departure from his early socialist beliefs and setting the stage for his future as Italy's dictator. Mussolini's journey from journalism to dictatorship was marked by a radical ideological shift. Next, we explore the early life of Adolf Hitler. Long before his reign of terror, Adolf Hitler was an aspiring artist whose dreams were crushed by rejection. Adolf Hitler, a name synonymous with one of the darkest periods in human history, was once a young man with a dream. Born in late 19th century Austria, Hitler had a passion for art that was as powerful as it was persistent. He spent his formative years sketching landscapes and architecture, dreaming of a future where he would be recognized as a great artist. In his early 20s, Hitler set his sights on the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, a prestigious institution that could open doors to the artistic future he desired. However, this dream was shattered not once, but twice, as he was rejected from the Academy on two separate occasions. These rejections were a blow to Hitler's ego, and they left him feeling bitter and resentful. The Vienna that he had once admired for its art and culture now seemed to him a city of elitists who did not recognize his talent. In the years that followed, Hitler would immerse himself in the city's political undercurrents, finding solace in extremist ideologies that blamed societal ills on specific ethnic and social groups. His experiences in Vienna, marked by rejection and failure, became a breeding ground for his extremist views. The city's cosmopolitanism, its rich mix of cultures and ethnicities, began to be seen by Hitler not as a strength, but as a threat to the purity and superiority of the Aryan race. 
These beliefs would later form the foundation of his ideology as a dictator. Interestingly, the artistic skills that Hitler honed during these years would not go to waste. He would later use them to design the Nazi Party's symbols and propaganda, turning his artistic dreams into a tool for manipulation and control. Hitler's journey from an aspiring artist to a dictator was shaped by a series of rejections and failures. Lastly, let's delve into the early life of Joseph Stalin. Before his reign as the iron-fisted leader of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin was studying to become a priest. This might seem like an unlikely beginning for one of history's most notorious dictators. However, it's within these corridors of faith that young Stalin's journey began. Born in the late 19th century in the Russian province of Georgia, Stalin was initially raised to be devout. His mother, a deeply religious woman, sent him to a seminary in Tbilisi, hoping that he would become a priest. For a while, Stalin seemed to be on the path towards a life in the church. However, beneath the surface, a transformation was taking place. At the seminary, Stalin began to question the religious teachings he was receiving. He became increasingly interested in the works of revolutionary thinkers, such as Marx and Lenin, and started to see the world through a different lens. This shift wasn't sudden, but a gradual process. As he delved deeper into revolutionary literature, Stalin became enthralled by the ideals of socialism. He started participating in secret political meetings, defying the seminary's strict rules and regulations. It was during this time that he began to show signs of the ruthless pragmatism that would define his leadership style. Eventually, Stalin left the seminary, trading his religious studies for a life dedicated to revolutionary politics. He quickly rose through the ranks of the Bolshevik party, demonstrating a knack for strategic planning and an unflinching resolve. It's here, in the turbulent world of early 20th century Russian politics, that Stalin began to shape his legacy. The journey from seminary student to dictator is a complex one. It's a path marked by ideological shifts, personal transformations, and a relentless drive for power. But it's also a reminder that the people who become history's most notorious leaders don't start out that way. They're shaped by their experiences, their choices, and the circumstances of their time. So, as we've seen, these notorious dictators led very different lives before they came into power. From the journalist and socialist, to the aspiring artist and the seminary student, their early paths were as diverse as their later rules. Grasping these nuances of their early lives is crucial to understanding the depth of their characters and ideologies. Their early experiences and backgrounds undoubtedly shape them, and understanding these can provide us with a unique perspective on their infamous reigns.